In this presentation, I will be discussing how we are measuring nitrous oxide fluxes year-round using an automated chamber system in an agricultural field here in Pullman, Washington. The overall goal of the study is to measure trace gas fluxes from soil, specifically nitrous oxide, under different vegetation types and management practices. First, we measured fluxes from an aspirational system, and currently we are measuring fluxes from a business-as-usual system for the Palouse region. For the aspirational system, we planted unfertilized cover crops, and for the business-as-usual system, we planted fertilized winter wheat. We wanted to see how the emissions differed between a fertilized versus an unfertilized system, since nitrogen fertilizer drives N2O emissions. We also wanted to see how emissions varied season to season, mainly during wet months compared to dry months, as well as during freeze-thaw events in the winter, as soil moisture also drives nitrous oxide emissions. Our study site is located at the Palouse Conservation Field Station, or PCFS, which is a USDA agricultural research station in Pullman, Washington. The figure on the bottom right is a basic schematic of what our experimental setup looks like and on the top right, you can see a photo of the site. We delineated a nine by 15 foot plot of land on an agricultural field, which we then divided up into 16 equal microplots. We then split the microplots into groups of four and applied a different seeding and fertilizer treatment to each group. This will be explained more clearly in a later slide. We then placed a flux chamber on each microplot, which open and close automatically one by one. When a chamber closes over top of the soil, the emissions that come up from the soil and the vegetation are trapped within the chamber headspace and consequently analyzed for nitrous oxide, carbon dioxide, and water emissions via instrumentation inside the trailers. This is the plot of land divided up into the 16 micropots with a chamber system located on each one. Here you can see one of the chambers closing down over top of the soil. The carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, and water emissions coming up from the soil are pulled at a very low flow rate through these tubes and into the trailer that houses our analytical instruments. The chambers are all automated by this yellow box at the bottom called a multiplexer, and the one at the top analyzes the carbon dioxide and water concentrations every single second while the soil emissions are being drawn through the tubing. We also connected a secondary instrument that analyzes the nitrous oxide emissions every second as well. The air then circulates back into the multiplexer and back out to the chamber, making it a continuous loop. As the concentration of the trace gases increase, we can then calculate the flux, which is the change in concentration per unit area per unit time. This slide shows the field setup for fall 2018 through summer 2019 with the four different treatments as described earlier. The microplots are color coded based on what was planted and whether or not it was fertilized. Shown here is the aspirational system. The microplots were either planted in winter pea, shown in blue, winter barley, shown in yellow and green, or a mix of winter pea and winter barley, shown in red. Only the winter barley in the green plots was fertilized, and the fertilizer that was applied was potassium nitrate that was enriched with 15N for isotopic analysis. This study has two different experiments taking place simultaneously, and the only microplots we will discuss in this presentation are the blue and red plots as they are unfertilized and representative of the aspirational cover crop rotation. If you want to know more about the planting and fertilization dates, feel free to pause the video and review the text on this slide. In the fall of 2019, soft white winter wheat was seeded and fertilized, which is representative of a business as usual rotation for this region. In October, ammonium hydroxide fertilizer was applied on the entire plot at a rate of 105 pounds per acre using a banding application method. Each microplot has three bands of fertilizer applied and three seeded rows about a half inch downslope of the fertilized rows. Our goal was to replicate the seeding method and fertilization rates at the field scale. 
In this figure, you can see more details about the treatment and again, feel free to pause the video if needed. Here is a simple diagram that illustrates how nitrous oxide fluxes are calculated. The analyzer records the increasing N2O concentration after a chamber closes over top of the soil surface. The dark red circles indicate recorded N2O concentration readings. When the chamber closes, the concentration slowly builds up over time at a certain rate, as you can see in the small cartoon in the top right. The solid line or slope connecting the circles is the flux, which is the change in N2O concentration over time for the surface area of the soil inside the chamber. When the N2O emissions are low, the slope is gradual and therefore the flux is small. When there are high emissions, like after a rain event, the slope gets a lot steeper and therefore the flux is higher. Here is almost an entire day's worth of plotted data from our N2O analyzer. Each color represents a different chamber and each chamber is closed for a period of 12 minutes. You can see on the left that the emissions are small and the slopes are gradual, resulting in low fluxes. During this time, however, there were a couple of rain events which later triggered nitrous oxide emissions to increase rapidly, resulting in high N2O fluxes. So what causes these variations in N2O fluxes? That is what we are trying to understand by analyzing the flux data and comparing it to precipitation, soil moisture, and temperature data which are all known to be drivers of N2O. This is a complicated slide, so bear with me as I talk you through it. Here are all of the flux results we have so far for the entire duration of the experiment. The N2O fluxes from eight of the 16 microplots are shown on the top graph. The red dots show the daily averaged fluxes and the blue line which is sometimes hard to see, are the daily max and min fluxes. These are in units of grams of N2O per day per area. The fluxes on the left of the graph, May to August 2019, are from the unfertilized cover crop, which you can see are very low, and on the right, from October 2019 to present day, are the fluxes for the fertilized winter wheat, which increased continuously since seeding and fertilization in October. The precipitation is shown on the second graph in millimeters of rain or melted snow. And the third graph shows the surface soil moisture in units of cubic meters of water per cubic meters of soil. I've also highlighted when the microplots were covered in snow. The bottom graph shows the daily average air temperature in red and the surface soil temperature in black. It should be noted that the precipitation data is very difficult to measure in winter when some of it is snowfall. Soil temperature and moisture readings are also difficult to obtain in the winter due to frozen water below the surface of the soil. To illustrate how we would read these results and look for correlations, a good example is the period just after seeding and fertilization in mid-October. There is a high precipitation event that occurs immediately afterwards and the data illustrate a correlated increase in soil moisture and an associated increase in N2O fluxes. Here is the same graph just showing the unfertilized cover crop growing season. As I mentioned, the fluxes are very small during this time period, except for on May 22nd, at which point nearby microplots were fertilized and all of the unfertilized plots were sprayed with approximately 5 liters of water. The graph shows a big flux spike at this time, but only for the daily maximum reading, which was the result of just one chamber. This means that there was one hot spot of high N2O emissions. The remainder of the summer was dry, which resulted in almost no N2O fluxes. Here's the first graph again, just zoomed in on the fertilized winter wheat growing season. The daily fluxes increased dramatically from December to January due to high precipitation in the form of rain and snow melt. The results were as expected, since an abundance of nitrogen fertilizer and wet soil conditions are both drivers of N2O. Our results were as expected in that the fertilized winter wheat yielded much higher N2O fluxes compared to the unfertilized cover crop, and also that precipitation and freeze-thaw events caused the soil moisture to increase, thus driving N2O emissions as well. 
Future plans for this project include continued monitoring through to the end of winter wheat harvest in fall 2020. There is also the possibility of continuing monitoring for yet another growing season. In closing, I would like to thank everyone for watching this presentation and to our team for making this project possible.